Well, here we are, May the 17th. We are only four days away from Harold Camping's uh, prophecy, if you'll give it that prediction. I don't, even, I don't even want to call it a prophecy. We're only four days away from Harold Camping's prediction. Okay. Uh, and many of you probably are not aware of what all this guy believes in. I know I've had contact with different brethren. Uh, about how that, you know, they say, well, I re really never even heard of the guy before, you know, I just know he's saying the rapture or the second coming or something is going to happen May 21st of 2011. Well, I want to talk a little bit about what's going to happen on May the 22nd to the Campingites, okay, because he is the head of a cult, all right, these, these are not Christians that just have some of their beliefs messed up, uh, no, I think that this is a very serious cult, a heretical cult. And I don't know, just something today, I don't know, you know, if it's the Lord saying they might do something weird here. I don't know, I'm going to get into that later. But I want to show you some of the beliefs from his actual website. Okay, you can see here it's called familyradio.com. This is the home page that you'll come to. Uh, if you look over there, we're going to check out here uh, some things that he's written, some of the questions about this May 21st thing. It says here, on May 21st, 2011, two events will occur. Two events. The rapture is only one event. It says, these events could not be more opposite in nature. The one more wonderful than can be imagined, the other more horrific than can be imagined. A great earthquake will occur the Bible describes it as such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake and so great. This earthquake will be so powerful it will throw open all graves. The remains of all the believers who ever have lived or who have ever lived will be instantly transformed into glorified spiritual bodies to be forever with God. Okay, let me stop there for a minute. Um, what he's saying is the reference that he's giving there is in the book of Revelation towards the end of the, of the tribulation time of Jacob's trouble, there will be a great earthquake. Okay, now what you need to understand is camping believes that we are currently in the great tribulation. I am dead serious. This man believes that we are currently going through the tribulation. You know, cuckoo, cuckoo. <laughs> this guy's nuts. I mean, when did the oceans turn to blood? not there. When did a third of all men die? It's not there. You see, what camping and other false prophets do is they say, what's well, figurative? No, the events in the book of Revelation are literal. It's there, and if it's figurative, it explains it as being figurative. Revelation chapter 12, the woman, okay, and it uh, Satan, the dragon, goes to make war with the remnant of her seed. Okay, now that doesn't mean that there's an actual physical woman and she goes and she has a child and the man-child's caught up and then... No, no, no. It's talking about Israel. Israel is the woman. Not Mary, by the way. Sorry to the Catholics, but the woman there is symbolic of Israel. Clearly. Okay, but the events, when it says that the oceans, a third part of the, the waters are going to be turned to blood. That's literal. Now, when has that happened? It hasn't happened. We are not in the tribulation. Camping is a liar and a deceiver. Let's continue. Uh, on the other hand, the bodies of all unsaved people will be thrown out upon the ground to be shamed. Uh, where's the scripture for that? None given. The inhabitants who survive this terrible earthquake will exist in a world of horror and chaos beyond description. Each day, people will die until October 21st, 2011, when God will completely destroy this earth and its surviving inhabitants. Huh? Uh, this guy's a cuckoo bird. You know, I called him in, a, in one of my comments. I said he's a, the king of cuckoo birds. And he is. This guy's a fruitcake. Let me tell you what. I mean, what he teaches is that the rapture is going to happen May 21st. 
here in four days at 6 o'clock on Saturday, the rapture is going to happen and the second coming. It's just one event. Uh, it's not one event. It's two different events. Okay, The rapture is at the beginning of the tribulation, before the time of Jacob's trouble. The body of Christ is removed Okay, before God's wrath is poured out. And then Jesus Christ and the glorified saints come back down at the second coming, the second advent for the battle of Armageddon to fight the Antichrist, the false prophet, and his armies. Revelation 19. And by the way, when Mystery Babylon is destroyed, when there's this great earthquake, the saints are in heaven cheering when it happens. Camping doesn't know the Bible, and his followers apparently don't either. Okay, and we're going to see about his beliefs on the uh, King James Bible here in just a couple minutes. But then to say that after this happens, you have June, July, August, September, October, for five months after that, you're going to have people dying every day? Where's this at? When the second coming of Jesus Christ comes, or when Jesus comes at the second coming, Jesus comes down and the saints go out and gather the nations and Jesus judges from Jerusalem. Matthew chapter 25, the judgment of the nations. And he separates them. The goats to the left hand, the sheep to the right hand. The sheep enter into the kingdom. Where's the millennial kingdom at? Where's the thousand-year reign of Jesus Christ and his saints? If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. Where's that? It's ridiculous. Absolutely absurd what this guy is saying. But let's continue. Then he goes on, we go down here in a little bit more and it says, What if May 21st ends and nothing occurs? The biblical evidence is too overwhelming and specific to be wrong. Christ's people can look with great confidence to this date because God promises His beloved He will not come upon them as a thief in the night. God in His mercy has revealed the virtual or the vital information needed to know the day. Judgment Day on May 21st, 2011 will occur because the Bible declares it. No, it doesn't. Anyone whom God has not saved will arrive at that day with no hope for salvation. Okay, what about the 144,000 Jews who get saved in the tribulation? But, oh, that's right, we went through the tribulation, and now we're at the end of it. Yeah. God warns simply, the door will be shut. Really? Where? Chapter and verse? None given. What do you say to those who insist we cannot know the precise day of judgment, or date of judgment day? Like it says in Matthew 24. What do you say to them? For one to object to May 21st, 2011, one must have biblical authority to do so. <laughs> uh, okay, I just gave it to you, Matthew chapter 24. It's right there. Other places as well. You cannot know the day of the second coming of Jesus Christ, which is what this nut is saying. Objections cannot be based upon consensus, traditions, or fear. God has given far too many biblical proofs for anyone to disregard May 21st simply because he or she does not like it. Yeah, you're dealing with a cult leader here. Harold Camping is a nut. Just total wacko. I'll tell you what. Um, then he goes on to say, The Bible has led us to May 21st, 2011. This date is not the product of the mind of one man or a group of men. You stinking liar, you. Harold Camping is the one that came up with this nonsense. Oh, but it's not the, it's not the uh, product of the mind of one man. This man lies just all the time. It's incredible. I'm going to show you more as we continue here. You're not going to believe some of this stuff. Let's continue. It says, it is the culmination of study of the entire Bible both the Old and New Testaments. This guy is non-dispensational, by the way. I'd like to add that. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes here. But this, this guy is all over the place. You talk about ripping verses out of context. This guy's the king of it. I mean, it's bad. Every word written in the original biblical autographs, uh-oh, 
were dictated by God, therefore all words, numbers, and sentences in these original writings are to be trusted as coming from God. <laughs> yeah. Okay, he doesn't have the original autographs. He doesn't have the original writings. He's never seen them. He quotes from the King James Bible, but he's not a King James Bible believer. He's King James only, you know. But he'll correct it every chance he gets. He says, oh, it's the original, the original, the original. See, there's a, there's a big difference between a King James Bible believer and somebody who's King James only. All right? Guys, a cuckoo. Back to the article here. It says, the fact that this date is the result of the synth synthesis of all s of Scripture causes May 21st, 2011 to take on very sobering factuality. It is no longer opinion, but a matter of fact. Liar. May 21st, 2011 is God's date. Oh, boy. Camping is the one that came up with it. I guess he thinks he's God. Where did I hear that before? There's something about ye can be as gods, knowing good and evil. I'm, I don't know. If somebody said it. I don't remember who. Back to it here. All other predictions are men's, man's attempts to predict the end, so it becomes a matter of eternal life or eternal death. One can no longer presume May 21st of this year will be just another normal day. Each person must come to entrust their lives to what God has written in His Word, the Bible, and plead to Him for mercy. Otherwise, God will come upon them with unmerciful vengeance on May 21st, 2011. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but, you know, God has written in His Word the Bible. What is His Word the Bible if this isn't it? You know, he, He'll quote this, King James Bible, but then you say, is it perfect? Oh, no, it's the original writings. It's the original autographs. Guy's a nut. One other thing here I want to look at quick. Uh, Judgment Day. You see here again, he says in this article, uh, he keeps using this term, holy God. Holy God, holy God. That, that phrasing there, holy God, does not appear anywhere in your King James Bible. It's weird. And these, these cult people will come up with weird little things, little idiosyncrasies, little statements that they'll say, you know, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You know, the, they'll, they'll come up with these weird little phrases, key phrases, and they use them over and over and over and over again. Okay, what is it? I think it's devils, to be very frank with you. I think this guy's possessed with devils to the point where he probably doesn't even, even have much of a mind anymore. It's bad. But it says here again, second paragraph, in its original languages, mostly Hebrew and Greek, it has never been changed, and each and every word in the original languages is from the mouth of God. He's never seen the original languages, people. Um, continuing here. We learn from the Bible that Holy God plans to rescue about 200 million people. That is about 3% of today's population. On the first day of the judgment, Matthew 21st, or I'm sorry, May 21st, 2011, they will be caught up, raptured into heaven because God had great mercy for them. This is why we can be so thankful that God has given us advance notice of Judgment Day because God is so merciful. Maybe He will have mercy on you. Maybe. Not God will have mercy on you. Oh, maybe. And you're going to see how this thing plays out with His plan of salvation. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get right into the thing here. Now, a couple months back, I did a sermon, and at the end, I gave a good, strong rebuke to Harold Camping because he is a false prophet. He is a minister of Satan. I don't believe that he's saved. Hey, whatever. A lot of people say, oh, I think he's saved. I think he's a Christian. I don't. Okay? Because the goals and things that he's going to accomplish through this false prophecy of his are perfectly in line with what Satan wants. All right, It's one thing for a Christian to be carnal, for a Christian to be messed up doctrinally. I'd have a little bit of grace. But when I see the motives and when I see the direction that a ministry is heading and it's lining up with what Satan wants to do, 
I say, you know, I think the guy's a minister of Satan. I don't think he's a saved man. Okay, I think he's a very wicked false prophet. Very wicked. But anyhow, I did a message and I went onto his website and I got his salvation message, his sal plan of salvation. And it was uh, 69 pages long. And uh, it's just absolutely ridiculous. This whole, the last two pages, pages 68 and 69, the name of Jesus isn't mentioned one time. And it's all, God might save you. He Maybe he will, possibly, maybe. He doesn't tell you what to pray. He doesn't say, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Nope, didn't mention Jesus' name. And it's interesting because I went back and initially, this was in my files. I, I didn't know where I put it. And I thought, well, there's no problem. I'll just go print it out again. And I got on his website, and I'm reading, and I'm thinking, this looks different. And lo and behold, I checked it out. I finally found the old one, and I checked it out. His salvation message has now been reduced from 69 pages down to 45. Hmm. And he took out a lot of this stuff that he had in the first time I printed it out. Very interesting. It's almost like he got caught. But it says here his current, as of, you know, May the, what is 17th, May the 17th of 2011, his current right now salvation message, it starts out here the introduction. Many people say, I want to be saved. And so in this booklet, we will attempt to face with complete honesty the question, what must I do to be saved? Okay, uh, they were asked that in Acts chapter 16. Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And thy house. He won't tell you that, though. It says here, because we will learn that no one can do anything to become saved. I just quoted the scripture. Acts chapter 16. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Belief. Faith. No one can do anything to be saved, according to Harold Camping. Very, very, very wicked man. And he goes on, you can see it here time and time again, becoming saved, becoming saved, becoming saved, becoming saved. And he goes through and it's all about, well, you, you know, maybe you can become saved, maybe. Now, I'm not going to print out, I didn't want to print out, uh, I think, the total with the index and everything else and the end notes and stuff. It was like 54 pages or something, and I thought, I am not going to waste that many pages, you know. I'm not going to waste that much paper printing out this ridiculous nonsense. So, I only printed the first and last page. Uh, this guy, I mean... <laughs> It is so messed up, it would take, it'd take you a week to untangle the mess that this guy made with his salvation message. And by the way, it shouldn't take you 45 pages to explain the message or the gospel of salvation. I mean, for crying out loud, you're a sinner, you can't save yourself, Jesus Christ was sinless, and he's the only one that can save you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Ta-da! You know, done. But these false prophets, they like to complicate things. You know, you can only come to this ministry for salvation. No other ministry can save you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you'll see that in his teachings too, by the way. He teaches that no church is legitimate anymore. That, you know, no evangelist, no preacher, no whatever. Only Harold Camping, you know, and his followers. It's a cult. This guy's nuts. Uh, here we have the, the last page of his salvation, his plan of salvation. I'm not going to read all this, but it says here, It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Camping is a Calvinist, okay, and I would say a hyper-Calvinist. I mean, this guy believes that you have to cry out to God for salvation and then sit there and wait for it. You know, you have to quietly wait. Well, then why does it say in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2, Now is the accepted time. 
now is the day of salvation? You can know 30 seconds from now whether or not you're saved. Why? Because it's faith. Just like that. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. You're a sinner. You can't save yourself. Jesus Christ was sinless. He died on the cross for you. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. That's it. I mean, you want all the scriptures? Watch my salvation message on my home page here at YouTube. You know, go to the King James Video Ministries. Go to Bible Believers Fellowship. I mean, there's and there's so many other good Bible believing, King James Bible believing websites out there that also will tell you about salvation, how to be saved. It shouldn't take you 45 pages, and you don't have to wait for it. You can have salvation today, right now. And if you're one of Camping's followers, you need to realize that. This guy's a liar. He's a deceiver. He's leading you into a false sense of salvation. But it goes down through there. He quotes, uh, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. He says, oh, that's, you know, that's your salvation. No, it is not. No, it is not. It's talking about two Christians waiting on the Lord by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. That's what it's about. Okay? That's your relationship after you're saved, your relationship with the Lord. It's not salvation. And it says, The peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. He quotes that verse. Like you're supposed to have peace because you're waiting for God to save you. It's just incredible. But um, then he ends, in the last sentence here, you can look at this, it says, And so perhaps God may save you. How are people falling for this? I don't get it. I really don't. I mean, it's just incredible. And you have here, I have here a MSNBC um, article, and there's a young woman there with her car all painted up. You know, we can know.com, return of Christ, May 21st, 2011, save the date. You know, and she's driving around making a fool of herself. And, you know, they're going through it and everything. And, um, but I want to read something here in this article. And this is where I'm going to end this little study I did. It says here, quote, If May 21st passes and I'm still here, that means I wasn't saved. Now, here's what I've been thinking. I hope I'm wrong. Could it be that we are seeing the stage being set for another Jim Jones suicide? Mass suicide of Camping's followers. Because, hey, if you honestly believe that you missed the rapture and you're going to be facing God's wrath till October 21st, you know, if you believe that, a lot of people are, would be tempted to commit suicide. I hope it doesn't happen because if it does, it's really going to be a problem for Bible-believing Christians because the world's already looking and they're trying to link us with camping. Oh, you believe in the rapture? Oh, May 21st. <laughs> no, I don't believe that. Camping is a nut. He is not teaching a pre-tribulation rapture for May 21st of 2011. He's teaching that it's a rapture, the second coming, the end of the world within five months. It's not even close to what a Bible-believing, a pre-millennial, pre-tribulation rapture Bible believer believes and teaches. It's not even close to what we believe. But to the lost world, they're going to say, oh yeah, that's that rapture stuff. Oh, the date's been proven wrong and whatever. That's going to be bad enough. But if Camping and his little nutty followers decide to do something extreme, and they decide because they missed the rapture, because it didn't happen, you know, camping might disappear or something like that. You know, fly off to the Cayman Islands with all the money he's gotten from these suckers. You know, that could be a possibility. You say, oh, camping disappeared. You know, oh, no, he, he made it to the rapture and we didn't. You know, oh, and they'll be... If that happens, that's going to be a real problem. It'll be another attack against Bible-believing Christians. 
I'm just throwing it out there. I don't have any inside sources or anything else. I'm just saying I hope that they don't pull off something stupid. I've seen this thing. I've studied it where you have this charismatic cult leader and he gets all the people to do nutty things, quit their jobs, drive around and paint their cars up with stuff on it like that, you know, and get so far away from scripture it's ridiculous. And then when something falls apart, when the thing falls apart, then they do something stupid. They all commit suicide or something like that. I hope that that doesn't happen. So if you are a camping elite, May 22nd, you're going to have to realize that your buddy was a false prophet. When there's no earthquake, worldwide earthquake on May 21st, and there's no millions of Christians being removed, he said 200 million. 200 million Christians being removed. Okay, that's what he said. And you say, well, then you're saying the rapture is not going to happen? I hope it does. You know why I hope it does? I hope it happens May 21st, 2011 at 6 p.m. when camping said it's going to happen. You want to know why I hope it happens then? Because camping will be left here. That's what I believe. You say, well, Brian, what if you're wrong? Well, I have a 50-50 chance of being right or wrong. Either he's saved or he's lost. You say, well, I think he's saved. Good for you. I think he's lost. I hope it does happen May 21st. I hope the rapture happens tonight. Even so, come Lord Jesus. You see, I live with the earnest expectation that I'll see my Lord and my Savior today. Okay, there's an old saying, you know, perhaps today. I'm not going to sell everything that I own and go sit on a mountaintop in a white robe or something looking up towards the sky. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be busy till the Lord takes me out of here. But I'm expecting Him today. Perhaps today. But if you think I'm going to be dumb enough to set a date for it, uh, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to tell you a day. This is the day. You know, I looked and I added this up and added that up. <laughs> Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. So, hopefully they don't do anything weird, okay? Because it's going to get to a point where Christians are going to start getting persecuted, and this nutty cult of Harold Camping could really mess things up for Bible believers. And if it does, I warned you. So, that's it for this video.